Hello. So I thought I'd mix things up today and make a tape loop and make some ambient drones just to mix up the old workflow and do something different to what I normally do. Um, I've got this cassette here that was in a drawer, falling apart. And I also found this bit of tape here. I don't know what's on that tape. It could be just a blank tape or it could be from a sort of bargain bin cassette. It could be um, Simply Red's greatest hits or, you know, something cheesy like, like Tina Turner. Um, I mean, no, no offense to Tina Turner, actually. If, if you're watching Tina, then honestly, like, you've achieved more than I, I will ever achieve. I'm not trying to take anything away from, from what you've done. What are the chances that Tina Turner is actually watching this, though? Um, probably quite slim, but you never know. So, um, Tina, I do apologize. Um, so let's talk about making a tape loop. What is a tape loop? Well, it's basically some tape that, that loops forever. It never, it will never stop. And if you've got a four track, it means you can put four tracks of audio onto the tape loop, onto the tape, and sort of bring them out and, and play, play with sound that way. So what I'm doing just now is I'm just trying to find a rough size of how much tape do I need. Then we're going to cut it to size and that's when things get a bit fidgety. Things are already a bit fidgety, I'm not going to lie, this is not a fun thing to do. If you have anger issues, If you have like big hands, sticky hands, if you're prone to violent outbursts, then I would not recommend att even attempting to do this because it can be incredibly frustrating. So I've got, I've got my tape now, kind of rough length, probably too big. I'm going to take some cello tape, some scotch tape. And I'm just going to cut like a really tiny a slither of tape just so I can connect these two ends and you want the tape on the back you don't want it on the on the front that you're going to be recording on although maybe that would be where did where did that tape go it's stuck to the scissors there we go <laughs> And this is what I'm talking about. At every turn, you're going to encounter something that is going to challenge your patience. Okay, okay, they are, they are connected, kind of. And there is an overhang here that I'm just going to slice off. Now let's realize that this is too big or too small if it's too tight it won't turn um, and this is the really fidgety part because there's so many bits of plastic here that you need to get this inside so I can already tell that it is a bit too big but it may not be a problem Oh my god, don't. This is so annoying. Okay, let's just take a deep breath. I'll be over soon. Okay, so it is a bit, it is a bit big. Just get under. Right. 
right. I will, I will not tell you again. Oh, that's what we're after. Now I'm thinking that this is a bit big, but if I could... I just want to hold that in place. If I could fold that up on top there... And is this crazy? Because there's these little bits. <laughs> if I could pop this over this one without it coming off. Don't you dare come off. Hey, right, now look at that. Get, get down. Okay, now that looks like that could be a decent look. Let's just get this on whilst you can. I'm going to put a screw in here to hold it in place and then we can find out does the tape loop work? Is there anything on the tape? Am I going to be met with the beautiful voice of, of Tina Turner or the not so beautiful voice of Mick Hutton is that, is that the simply red guy and I'm only joking guys Mick if you're watching I think you've got some great songs Fairground absolutely great song okay let's Let's give it a try. Okay, so let's find out if the tape loop works, if the tape loop loops well, and what's actually on the tape. I'm gonna go with side A. And... <laughs> what is that? Okay, so it is looping and it is playing something, it's looping well. Let's pitch this down. Some really nice synth in there. There's some degradation happening, some warbling around this point. Which I like, that's cool. Sometimes it becomes so much that you can't use it, but that's really usable, I think. But now I really want to know what this tape was and I kind of feel a bit bad that I've chopped it and sliced it and destroyed it. Let's, let's try the other side. Let me give us a, an idea. Okay, it's not English. Sounds like Turkish or Middle Eastern. But again, it is looping well. Wow. I kind of feel bad that I'm going to record over this, but there's no way I'm making another one <laughs> because anger issues. That's right. Let's get set up with some instruments. Okay, so I've got the OP1 out. Um, but I have realised that I'm having some issues with tracks 2 and 4 on this thing. I think it might just need a bit of TLC. So I'm going to record on tracks 1 and 3 and then I can still play over the top and maybe I can run this out through the Eurorack effects and that should, should be enough to come up with something pretty ambient and nice. Um, so what I've decided to do is get a kind of sine wave arpeggio. Something like that. And I'm just going to just record and see 
and see what happens, basically. <laughs> okay. It's a very short tape loop, so I'm not going to need much. Let's see if that actually worked or not. Okay. And it doesn't sound like much now, but the beauty of um, tape loops is slowing things down. <laughs> I kind of really like that already, so <laughs> I'm going to pick another sound to put onto track three. And I kind of like this. Let's, oh, you've got to actually do things when you're recording um, analog. <laughs> I don't want that. I want. This is my vocals from the last video I made. Which I really like and I've been using on loads of things recently. So let's have a listen to track one. It's such a shame that the other tracks aren't working because I would love to layer that. But um, I'm going to make it polyphonic. Something like that. Um, yeah. Now you need to remember to switch channel 3, otherwise you will record over what you've just recorded. Done that many a time. Right, let's see. Sounding usable to some extent. And I'm going to put some strings on top. Let's go into channel two. Definitely time to bring in some external effects and get the Eurorack in to help bring this drone to the next level. So here is the drone and the first thing I'm going to do is... And some bit crush. Just to add more hiss, as if there wasn't enough hiss, and to <laughs> add a bit of crisp, sizzly character. And it kind of distorts some of those notes as well. And I'll bring in the bend control. and some reverb. Already, it sounds a lot more powerful.
there's something about the kind of compression and distortion that I'm getting from this tape loop. It sounds like a kind of wall of noise, but it's not out of control or like sore to the ears. Very pleasing. So hope you've enjoyed this video today. Please let me know if you did. Leave a comment and a like. It really helps the channel out and I really like it. So I'll catch you next time.